Welcome viewers. This is an ID TechX discussion um, about hydrogen. Hydrogen, of course, is one of the, uh, the hottest topics right now for both transportation and industrial uses. And um, I've got the two expert analysts on the line to uh, help um, discuss these points and see why hydrogen is so interesting. Um, Daniele and, and David, could you quickly introduce yourselves and your role at ID TechX? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Luke, for inviting us to this uh, discussion. My name is uh, Daniele Gatti. I'm a technology analyst for IDTechX, and I'm involved in energy storage and hydrogen uh, technologies. And uh, I'm David Wyatt. Um, I'm part of the electric vehicles team here at IDTechX, um, technology analyst, and I've uh, authored reports on um, and heavy duty commercial vehicles, light commercial vehicles, uh, recently authored a, a report on, on air taxis, um, and I'm currently updating our fuel cell vehicles report, which will be launched later in the year. Fantastic. Well, thanks both for being here and um, here today to answer some of the questions we have. Uh, I guess just to start with, um, Daniele, why is it that we constantly hear about hydrogen these days? Yeah, that's a question I, I received many times. Um, well, the main reason is uh, regarding this uh, this question, uh, sorry, regarding the why we're gonna hear a lot about hydrogen is, um, I would say, because of the large investment that we hear uh, a lot from different countries, especially from Europe. Um, Europe uh, is one of, uh, let's say, the region, the countries which is involved in uh, in hydrogen, and there, there has been a lot, like tens of billions of investment uh, toward hydrogen. Uh, which is a, uh, in my opinion, it shows two main things. First of all, the interest to develop what is called the hydrogen economy. But the second part, it also shows that there is quite uh, a challenging uh, route to to develop this hydrogen economy. Great. Yeah. So lots of investment in hydrogen from governments around the world. Um, so how can it actually be used, and why is it useful? I guess a question for both of you from the, the transport side and the industrial side. Yeah, um, I mean, if I would start, uh, I mean, for for our latest report about the electrolyzer, um, we have seen that hydrogen can be used uh, for industrial application mostly. So I believe, and I think uh, David might share with me this this this, uh, this point of view that hydrogen might be initially be used as an um, in industrial feedstock. And these uh, is where, let's say, electrolyzer might start to be an important role. Um, but I think also, David, you have in your uh, point of view about auto, automotive sector. Yeah, obviously, from the automotive side, there's tremendous pressure um, to, to green the entire transport industry. So hydrogen is attractive in the extent that, that effectively the, the exhaust emission is, is water. So um, on-road emissions um, and are basically reduced to zero, and, and this is the driving goal of, of many governments around the world now, recognising um, the impact on, on local air quality and also uh, the opportunity to make hydrogen from renewable sources offers the possibility of, of making um, it a much more kind of climate um, friendly fuel and with huge reductions in CO2 emissions. So that's why there's so much talk around transport, because currently obviously fossil fuels um, are not a clean source. Um, increasingly recognise that I think the battle has been won. Um, the, everyone is aware of the impact that this is now having both on the global climate and on, on the populations in urban environments. So um, this is why as a transport fuel is being increasingly talked about. Should we be sceptical about it? Hydrogen and transport, David? Um, I, th I think it comes down to duty cycle a lot of the time. And so um, Hydrogen, yes, there are. You can make fuel cell vehicles that run. They these vehicles can run on the roads. They can perform the tasks that are being done by fossil fuel powered vehicles today. But they're also competing with electric vehicles. Electric vehicles can also be made to be uh, incredibly um, green um, and, and reduce CO2 emission, reduce the impact on uh, pollution on local populations. So um, it comes down to to cost and duty cycle. Um, Battery electric vehicles are perfect for, for relatively short range applications um, where the, the daily demand isn't particularly high. Um, where that uh, obviously, um, oh, Daniel is probably going to talk about more about hydrogen production, but it requires an enormous amount of energy 
to generate hydrogen. So if you're if you're using electricity to make hydrogen, to then break hydrogen to make electricity again, there's a fundamental inefficiency in that process. Whereas right. if you could just use electricity into a battery, you're exploiting that electricity in, in the best way. So where battery electric vehicles can meet the requirements, then battery is always going to be cheaper and, and potentially equally as green. We're also seeing tremendous improvements in battery electric vehicles. We're seeing improvements in range. We're seeing um, the Teslas out there able to deliver kind of the requirements of a, a current uh, fossil fuel vehicle. So hydrogen in those applications doesn't make a lot of sense. The, where it does make sense is where potentially the battery size um, is infeasible in terms of kind of heavy duty trucks um, and, and potentially aircraft and boats. There was a there was an interesting um, news a uh, couple of days ago about Zero Avia, which had a demonstration or a testing project, and the plane crashed. Uh, unfortunately, I hope that everyone um, was saved. Uh, but this is something I, I was also wondering about the uh, aerospace sector. Let's say, um, what do you think about it? Again, it comes down to. Um, effectively fitting enough energy into a plane to, to power or, or into an, any kind of vehicle to power its journey, um, where fuel cell systems might have an advantage in, in, in the energy density. If you take hydrogen as a fuel and then you are able to, with, with the tanks and, and fuel cell stack and battery, um, able to make that system relatively lighter than an enormous battery system that would be required for flight, then the kind of hybridization with a fuel cell potentially offers a much greater range with aviation. So it is, it is a sector where it's certainly interesting. Um, aviation, though, takes a, a lot of work to, to certify the new components and to, to kind of the, the regulations behind the industry take a lot of development work. So um, there are interesting projects going on, but it's, it's a way away from being a commercial product. Um, and and I, I think we, we kind of, have to expect with these test demonstration flights that they may not always go to plan, but that's why they have a test and demonstration phase. Um, so, yeah, I think there are, there are certainly some opportunities there, but there's it's not immediately around the corner. There is going to definitely be a, a time period where they're going to have to demonstrate both the technology and the economics to, to show that it makes sense. Great. Um, Daniele, are there any other um, reasons to be skeptical, I guess, in non-transportation sectors using hydrogen? Well, in non-transportation, I mean, mm, technologies are approaching to, let's say, the final stage. Uh, there are several demonstration projects into the um, steel sector. Um, there are also, like, I think what is also important is not only for the final application, but also as we mentioned, okay, the reduction for the electrolyzer, but um, what is actually like Europe, like as we mentioned before, Europe is one of the main uh, countries uh, involved. And I think what's relevant to mention is that we are not only looking at production and consumption, but it's also the distribution network, which somehow is linked right. with the consumption. And uh, like, if we can imagine like using uh, today, I don't know, for example, in Italy, we have uh, natural gas, which is used for heating and um, uh, cooking also. Um, so if we can imagine to convert it to a green hydrogen, uh, this is also like related to the distribution side, transmission and distribution of hydrogen. So there are also a lot of projects related to that. Um, so, yeah. That's something that, that, I mean, everything needs to be uh, built together, right? That's why we see huge investments. Uh, like I think you, the European Union only plan to invest almost, uh, I think around 80 billions uh, from 2020 to 2030. So, and this is like, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, highlight the size and the difficulty to develop this, uh, this concept. When we talk about hydrogen, there, there's lots of different types, right? There's blue, green, gray, not all hydrogens created equal. Um, could you discuss a bit about that? Yeah, we, we hear a lot about the rainbows color of hydrogen, but yeah, main, yeah, basically the green one is hydrogen produced from only renewable energy. And this means we need to use an electrolyzer. 
then what is called blue hydrogen. So we produce hydrogen from fossil fuel and then we capture the carbon dioxide and then gray hydrogen is just uh, we produce hydrogen, we pollute. Uh, this is like basic definition. But um, I think uh, in, in the next years, I mean, from, at the moment we only produce, let's say, uh, more than 99% gray hydrogen. But I think in the next years, what we are going to see is a, a competition between blue and green hydrogen. And uh, to be honest, I don't, I don't think there is going to be one winner um, because uh, blue and green or whatever, gray, gray, let's say it will turn in blue, hopefully. Um, but, uh, but blue and green hydrogen, uh, the adoption of blue or green, it depends on the current uh, the situation of the state of the country where we are using, um, where we are producing hydrogen. So if, if we think, for example, in, uh, in, um, in US, maybe that might be uh, cheaper to use uh, electricity than natural gas in some states. Uh, in other states, I don't know if we think uh, uh, Russia, for example, which will have a very cheap, uh, low-cost natural gas, then might be uh, would make more sense to produce blue hydrogen. So uh, it will depend on, uh, let's say, cost uh, perspective, uh, where it's going to be more dominant blue or green hydrogen. Great. And all these topics discussed in your new electrolyzer report, right? Yeah, we mentioned, yeah, in, this, uh, in the report, we talked about the uh, Europe situation, the production. We uh, made, a, um, of course, a forecast of what could be the future application in, from an industrial point of view, which of the sector considered is going to grow faster, like uh, between methanol, ammonia, um, steel, also automotive. Uh, thanks for to. Uh, David and your forecast as well, and that's of course the forecast about hydrogen, um, the electrolyzer market forecast about size in terms of uh, megawatts installed and uh, market size of billions of euros or dollars. Great, um, and David, you're currently doing a, a new report on fuel cell electric vehicles. Um, when can I expect to be driving a, a hydrogen car? <laughs> um, I, I think uh, hydrogen cars are interesting on. There are obviously kind of three models already out there, which are relatively famous. The Toyota Mirai, uh, the Hyundai Nexo, Honda Clarity. Um, so there are vehicles out there you can buy. Um, they have been relatively popular in places like California. Um, but I think it comes back again to kind of duty cycle. And we're seeing electric cars that are able to deliver, to deliver everything that anybody needs out of a car. If you need great range, there are electric cars out there that can deliver the kind of 300 miles. That's that's becoming kind of right. the norm. So uh, it, it's not an issue anymore of which green kind of technology do I need? Like I think I think battery technology is going to work out cheaper for these smaller vehicles, and it meets the the requirements. So I'm not particularly confident on the on the car side that it's a technology that's required. Um, I, I think it, it's it's an attraction for people producing um, hydrogen because they see the transport market as as the kind of most lucrative um, short term market for them. So more vehicles on the road would, would kind of promote that market, and 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 the hydrogen can be generated and sold at a, a better cost than it necessarily could be sold to industry. Um, I, I I think. Uh, there's an there's an, a, a much better argument for uh, heavy duty vehicles where long haul applications require um, this kind of tremendous daily range, which with a battery um, is either going to take a kind of tremendous amount of, of charging technology to kind of rapid charge those in the in the necessary time periods, um, which we haven't quite seen, but we're still waiting on on the Tesla Semi for that. So that that's going to come right. out later this year, and it might it might answer those kind of arguments, um, but. But yeah, there's, there is a kind of some really positive hydrogen truck projects going on. I think um, the efficiency is still the massive issue with it as a transport fuel. Uh, and again, it needs this work to show that it's going to be um, cheaper uh, and green because it's it's all very well saying the fuel will be green. But I think the stats something like 96 percent of hydrogen produced is is grey hydrogen at the moment. And as a transport fuel, the CO2 emission makes absolutely no sense. So um, yeah, I, th I think 
I wouldn't be looking to a, a hydrogen car if I was you, unless unless the hydrogen <laughs> economy really takes off and that hydrogen becomes available and the fueling stations are there. I don't see it as the driver. I don't see that the, the, that it pushing it along. Like the the driver to, hi, uh, to hydrogen as a fuel probably comes from heavy duty if it's coming from anywhere. Um, and there, there is some work, development work going on with light commercial vehicles, but again, um, those commercial duty cycles for those vehicles are, are relatively short. There are some longer range ones, but um, yeah, again, it needs to be demonstrated. We do some kind of TCO analysis in, in our reports. So, so that, that information is there um, for, okay. from our perspective on it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't think we, we will be buying hydrogen cars, um, particularly soon, un, unless you're super enthusiastic about hydrogen. All right, great. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. <laughs> Maybe I was on. Great, yeah. So, um, well, thanks both very much for joining this discussion today and for your uh, your insights.